Today in Understanding Resin, we're going to talk about more of a concept than specifically a certain circuit. And we're going to talk about the instant repeaters and zero tick pistons in general. Before we start, I have one disclaimer. For zero tick pistons, some of these things that you're going to see today, Mojang can actually fix these bugs at any time without letting you know, so some contraptions using these might break in future. But they do work now, at least in 1.16. So, first we're going to talk about the instant repeater. So, what the instant repeater does is it basically does the same thing as repeater except it has no delay. None. Zero. So, I can demonstrate right here. As you can tell, as soon as I turn this on, this activated as well. And same for when I turn it off. Now the way this works is very interesting. So basically how this thing works is through quasi-connectivity, this piston is being bud powered. So that means it thinks it's powered when it's actually not. So right now, this is running into this block. Now as soon as I turn this on, this will realize that it's actually not being powered because as soon as I turn this on, this will start moving this block. And when it moves this block, this will no longer be powered, technically, and then this will retract it at the same exact time, which in return unpowers this as soon as it's powered. It's kind of weird. It's basically being powered and unpowered in the same tick. So that's why this block moves here instantly, as you can tell basically spitting out super fast, even faster than a normal one tick pit pulse. And that is how we can get this thing to work. Because of zero tick pistons. Now you can replicate zero tick pistons through this. Now this this is basically a pulse shortener. And what it does is normally you'd have you would have two repeaters and you would have this like that, and then you get a three tick pulse. But we have a comparator and a repeater, because these both output a one tick pulse. But this one tick pulse takes just a hair longer than this one. And because of that, we get a zero tick pulse. Now it doesn't look like it, because when I turn this on, the rest of it does actually does not turn on or off or anything. But actually it does, because as you can tell, this immediately moves the block. So this is how you can harness the power of zero ticking. Finally, we move on to this contraption here. What it does is it basically moves blocks in one direction as they get placed. So for like a concrete maker. Now normally you see these contraptions look sort of like this. But there's one issue with that. It's not fast enough. So Using zero tick pistons, we can make it very fast, like so. So the way this works is when I place a block, this torch will instantly power this resin line, which then will power this piston here, causing quasi-connectivity to bud power this piston. And then as soon as it pushes the block, this turns back off, which then, since this is continuing to update this guy here, this guy will turn back off because it's basically being powered and unpowered at the same exact time. And that's why we can move lots of blocks very fast with this guy. Alright, so now that you know a little bit about this zero tick stuff, what can it be used for? Well first the instant repeaters. The instant repeaters can transmit a signal any distance, well as long as the chunks are loaded, any distance instantly. So that means this lever is connected to this sign over here, and as soon as I flick it, it'll activate it. Now, with normal repeater, you have a little bit of delay. It wouldn't be a lot, but there are some instances, like if you have some sort of race or something, and you want multiple bays to open up at the same time, you can use instant repeaters for that to give everyone a fair advantage or give no one an unfair advantage because you never know that one tick could decide 
the end of a horse race or something, or a boat on ice race. Those are fun. So this is one way you can use instant repeaters. It's either to activate a lot of things at once, at the same time, or transmit signals really far with zero delay. So here we have a concrete maker. So what this does basically is when you do create concrete, you get concrete powder, of course. And concrete powder isn't all that useful, but what is useful is actual concrete. So normally what you have to do is you have to put concrete next to water so it hardens and then you mine it. But there are more effective ways than that. And here we have a concrete maker, or, well, a simple design of one. So you can either have TNT blow up the concrete. This is for Java Edition only because TNT blows concrete up. In Bedrock, half of it's gone. And uh, Zero Take doesn't work in Bedrock. So you're probably going to be in Java if you're using this. So you either have a TNT duplicator, which we'll talk in a future episode, or you can just have a big block of block. Basically make a big block or a sheet of blocks and then you mine it afterwards. But what this is useful for is that if you have a ton of concrete powder and you really don't feel like doing it by hand, all I have to do is switch on the TNT dispenser. Okay, it's working. And now I just hold down the right click. And there you go. Look how fast that goes. So I'm going to wait a minute and I'll show you how much concrete this thing generates. Oh, looks like it broke. Well, it happens a lot actually with these things. There we go. Okay. There we go. Now, the only problem about Zero Tick is in the fact that it does actually break like that. Because Zero Tick isn't 100% reliable, but it's been close to a minute, 45 seconds I'd say. And let's just see how much concrete we got. Okay, five and a whole, that's a lot of concrete. So we've got at least three stacks in here because it's still filling up. Now it's in a matter of a minute. So imagine doing that, but for 10, 20 minutes. Just AFK right there, placing concrete. You'll generate a lot of concrete. Now the reason this works is one, as we recall, we have uh, this circuit here that I've showed earlier, but we also have this. This is just like that circuit, except all it does is it has these pistons facing down instead of to the side. And it has closet connectivity. And basically, just when this gets powered, this is powered and unpowered at the same time, causing it to do the instant, causing it to move the blocks instantly. So that's another use for these zero tick things. I will warn you, if you're using one of these zero tick contraptions, they could break at any time. Because Mojang at any time could say, hey, let's just fix that bug finally. Or they'd be like, this is way too overpowered, so we're going to fix it. Because they did fix zero tick farms, so I would not be surprised if they fixed this. I'd be disappointed, but not surprised. Now that we know how these work, and a few uses for them, we need to know how to build them. Because else we'll never be able to use it. So... First up, the instant repeater. So what you want to do is you have your line that you're going into. You want to have a block of wool, a sticky piston, two blocks from it because this, this is going to extend into it. You want to have a sticky piston on top with a redstone block and then place a piece of wool right there. And then take this line wherever you feel like. And now if I power this, there you go. So that's how you build an instant repeater. Next up, if you want to harness the power of zero tick, what you need to do is you need to have a sticky piston with a block on it. You have the comparator run into the piston and the repeater run into the block. If you switch the two, it won't work. Two of these rest and dust. And now you have rest and dust out here. Now, if you use a repeater, you won't be able to use zero tick with a repeater. And in fact, yes, the repeater will turn it into a one tick pulse or four tick pulse. 
So you cannot use a repeater once you do this. You can use it. Actually, you cannot use an instant repeater either. Because an instant repeater needs at least four ticks for it to work. The pulse has to be at least four ticks long. If it's not, it's going to break itself. Now finally, the block feeder. You put a block with a resin torch on it, piston on top, and then you have another piston on top. And now what you need to do is, all you have to do is hook that up to this piston. And normally, I use a target block. And there you go. So now you can place lots of blocks at once. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed today's episode about zero tick pistons. Now it was a bit different because we talked more about a concept than a specific circuit, but zero tick pistons are very useful. Now don't rely on them too much because Mojang can at any point fix that bug and all those contraptions will break. But when you can use it, do. Because like I said before, they are very useful and they're fun to play with sometimes, as long as they don't give you a lot of headaches. That's all from Understanding Redstone. Catch you in the next episode.